اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان اللعین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوة الا باللہ العلی العظیم حسبنا اللہ و نعم الوکیل نعم المولا و نعم النصیر نحمده و نستعینه و نستغفره و نشکره ونسلي ونسلم على حبيب إله العالمين حافظ السر ومبلغ رسالته الرسول المسدد المصطفى الأمجد المحمود الأحمد أبي القاسم محمد وبآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم ومنكر فضائلهم وغاصب حقوقهم من الأولين والآخرين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وكلامه الكريم وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عالم الغيب فلا يظهر على غيبه أهدا آمن بالله وصدق الله العلي العظيم صلوا على محمد وآل محمد In Surah Jinn which is chapter number 72 of Quran Majid Verse number 26, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Quran says, Alimu al-ghayb, fala yudhhiru ala ghaybihi ahada. Which means that here, Quran mentions the quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying that he is alimu al-ghayb, he is the knower of unseen. Then Quran continues by saying, fala yudhhiru ala ghaybihi ahada. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not conceal his secrets to any. Fala yudhhiru ala ghaybihi ahada. One of the quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he does not reveal his secrets to anybody. So we all know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hakim, which means that he is wise. We, we have heard this several times, that he does things wisely, don't we? We have, we, have, we have heard this, that Allah does things wisely. If you move forward and if you look at the ahadith, so you will find that Imam Ali alayhi salam says in the Hajj Balagha that Sadru al-Aqilu sanduku sirrahi What does it mean? It means that the chest of an intellectual person is, is a treasure box of his secrets. So it means that an, a, an intellectual person, a wise person, if he has got his secrets, he will keep it with himself. He won't share with somebody else. Because the time he shares with somebody else, then it's not going to remain a secret anymore. Sadrul Aqil Sanduko Sirrahi, Imam Ali Salam says. If you move forward and if you look at those personalities who were wise, like Luqman e Hakim. Luqman was so wise that he is given this title of Hakim. And I don't say that Quran says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed a whole surah after Luqman, Hakim. He was not a prophet, chapter number 34, but he's called Luqman. And we all know about Luqman, and I won't speak much about Luqman. But then we all know that he is called Hakim. He is wise. He was asked once, O oh Luqman, what is the crux of wisdom? So he says there are two things. What are those things? He says the first thing is that I... Don't ask those things which I already know. The second thing is, he says that I don't burden myself with those things which does not concern me. This is the crux of wisdom. Let us move forward. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, he gives wasiyah or nasiha to, uh, or advises if you like, to his son, Muhammad Hanafiya. He says, O oh son, remember, that do not say what you do not know. Which is very true. Don't say, don't say what you do not know. 
Thus, Imam Ali salam says in the Jubalaga, La adri nisful ilm. Which means saying, I don't know, is half of the knowledge. So, you know, many a times when we are posed questions, and we don't feel shy to say, I don't know. And they'll tell you, what, you are a Mawlana. I said, it doesn't matter. Sheikh Mufid was asked. And Sheikh Mufid, such a great personality, he said, I don't know. So people say, people say, Sheikh, you are a Sheikh. And you are mounting the pulpit. You should know. So he said that if you want to make a pulpit for me of those things which I do not know, then that pulpit will be so high, it will reach the, high, it will reach the heavens. There are so many things I don't know, Sheikh Mufid says. In the Nikas. So Imam Ali Ali Salam says to his son Muhammad the Hanafiya, he says that do not, do, do not say those things which you do not know. And then interestingly, Ali Ali Salam says, do not say everything what you know. <laughs> do not say everything what you know. It's very interesting. It's very true. Sometimes you are not asked. In our language we say, do do taishin. Yeah, when we were kids, if we say things which we were not supposed to, our parents would tell us, Why do you have to say? So here, Imam Ali salam says to his son, Muhammad Hanafiya, do not say everything what you know. You might know, but don't say if there's no need. Alimul ghaib. Allah is, he, is, he knows everything. He's the knower of unseen. But he does not reveal his secrets to any, to any entity. Then Quran continues in Surah Jinn, verse number 27 onwards, except Manir Tazad, for those who are chosen ones. He says to his Rasul, that is something different, which we don't want to discuss about that. Sometimes, see, we have got a whole concept of taqiyya in Islam, which means that you need to hide your faith. I mean, time comes, you have to hide your faith, which is called taqiyya, dissimulation. In Arabic, they've got a statement which says, Ustur, Ustur is to hide or to conceal in Arabic. Ustur, Zahabak. Zahab is gold. Sometimes you've got gold. It means your property, your asset or whatever. Do not say to everybody, Ustur, Zahabak. Then, Wa Madhabak. Even your faith. Sometimes you are working with those people that you are odd one out. You don't need to say that who you are. Yeah. So, ustur zahabak. Wa madhabak means your faith. Wa zahabak means your plan. Sometimes don't say your plan also. That's what Nabi Yaqub said to his, to his son Yusuf. That do not, your dream, do not mention to your brothers. Hide it. Hide your plan. Yeah. Ustur zahabak. Zahabak wa madhabak. Our imams, they would train their students in such a way that they should control themselves and they should keep their secrets within themselves. Like the fifth holy imam. Tonight, tonight is his birthday, isn't it? it is his birth anniversary. Our fifth holy imam would control or would train his, his students. He had so many students. Imagine history tells us that he had 4,000 students who learned from Imam Bakr salam, in Medina. There was a whole university. Yeah. Imam, Ali, Imam Bakr salam, he started a university in Masjid al-Nabawi. Then it, it, Imam Sadiq salam, continued that legacy. Yeah. So these two Imams, they did a great job because they had that opportunity. Thus, they took advantage of the time which they had. So they, they molded and they trained their students and those students were not only Shias, they were from different parts, from different madhahib, from different schools of thought. Like there was one student, that he was a newcomer. Imam Bakir al -Islam, in his class, once he sees a newcomer. When the lesson got over, Imam's eyes fell on that newcomer. He says, who are you? Can you introduce yourself to me? He says, I'm Jabir ibn Yazid al-Jafi. Where are you from? Are you from Medina? He says, no. I'm from Kufa. I'm from Kufa. Now, Imam alayhi salam, having that in Maghrib, he saw that bright future from Jabir ibn Yazid al-Jafi. And th this is that tribe where he came from that many people, they sacrificed their lives in Karbala. The tribe of Jabir ibn Yazid al-Jafi from Kufa. 
So Imam, he says that I want to be, I want to benefit from you. I want to be a student. He becomes the student of Imam. Time comes. He, he benefited from the presence of Imam for 18 years. That is a long period of time. 18 years. And now he wants to, he wants, he wants to go back to his hometown. So he comes at the presence of Imam Bakir alayhi salam. And he says that I want to go back. So Imam, now Imam, Imam trains him to control. Imam tells him that, listen, this is the time of Bani Umayyah. It is their kingdom. I don't want you to say anything what I have taught you. He himself, he says, Allamani Abu Jafar tis'ina alfa hadifa. Abu Jafar means Imam Bakir has taught me 90,000 traditions. Then he says, Lam uhadith bihi ahada. But I have not di disclosed anything. Why? Because I was refused by Imam Bakir alayhi salam. Lam uhadith bihi ahada. That I should not say anything and I didn't say anything. Imam says, do not say anything. He says that now, since I'm leaving, I am leaving you, I want you to give me... Then Imam continues. Imam says that, listen, if you say anything, what I have taught you, la'anati wa la'anatu abai. He says, there will be my curse and the curse of my forefathers on you. See, Imam tells him, don't say anything. He says, I won't say anything, promise. Ya Ibn Rasulullah. But then I want a piece of advice from you. Imam says, you have spent 18 years at my presence. What more do you want, O, ja o Jabir? He says, la yunzaf. You are an endless ocean. I want to benefit from you. Now, in interestingly, Imam gives him uh, 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 an advice, a piece of advice. Leaving everything, he just gives him a small piece of advice. He says that whenever you do anything, do not be hasty. Do not rush to do anything. Yeah, take help of your ilm, think, and take help of ilm of others. And then he leaves the house of Imam. Now with him, he was not alone. He was with Nu'man bin Bashir. They were together. They left Medina, they were going towards Kufa. Nu'man bin Bashir says that when we were traveling on our way to Kufa, a person appeared, very tall person. He had a letter on his hand. And he hands over that letter to Jabir. He says, Jabir, this is for, from Abu Jafar. Imam Muhammad Bakir's kuniyat was Abu Jafar. He says, this is from Abu Jafar, Muhammad ibn Ali al-Bakir. When Jabir gets that letter, he takes that letter and he kisses it. See that love he had for, from Imam, ba for Imam Bakir. He takes that letter, he kisses it. And then he opens that letter and he starts reading that letter. When he reads that letter... The content of the letter, one can imagine that Norman bin Bashir says that the color, the, the color of the face of Jabir completely changed. Jabir was cracking jokes. He was laughing. He was smiling. He, was, he didn't seem worried. But after reading that letter, he seemed worried. He, he, seemed, he looked very weird. And I was amazed looking at him. But then he closed that letter. And we continued with our journey. When we reached Kufa, and soon after reaching Kufa, after getting to his house, when we see Javir coming out from his house, he wears something which he tied on his neck. And he started screaming and shouting in the alleys and streets of Kufa by saying, Mansur bin Jamhur Amirast, taking some names. Of a person, Mansur bin Jamhur, he's the king, saying weird things. Now, I want you to think for a while that if, if you or anybody here, he just screams in the alleys, in the streets of Leicester, saying that a particular person, Hassan bin Ali, Muhammad bin Ali, Hussein bin Ali, is the king. So you will be thinking that what's wrong with this guy? There's something wrong. So people of Kufa, they started making up stories. They started saying that Jabir became crazy. He's a madman. He's crazy. They started making up stories for Jabir, about Jabir. Norman bin, Norman bin Bashir says, after three days, the governor of Kufa receives a letter from the caliph, Hisham bin Abdul Malik. Hisham bin Abdul Malik is the one who poisoned Imam Bakr. He receives a letter from the caliph. The governor of Kufa. 
in that letter, Hisham bin Abdul Malik says that I want you to kill Jabir ibn Yazid al-Jawfi. Behead him and send his head to, to me. See, the enemies of Ahlul Bayt in that time, they knew who were the scholars of Ahlul Bayt, of Mazhab Ahlul Bayt. They didn't want the maktab of Ahlul Bayt to flourish. Thus, they were trying hard to kill the scholars of Ahlul Bayt. On hearing this, on, list, in, in, on getting that message, the governor of Kufa writes back, he writes a letter to the caliph, of, to the caliph Hisham bin Abdul Malik, that you want me to behead Jabir ibn Yazid al-Jawfi? Jabir ibn Yazid al-Jawfi is crazy now, he's mad. You don't, need, you don't need to kill him. At that time, Nu'man bin Bashir says that at that time I could realize that in that letter, it was the command of Imam Bakir alayhi salam. That when you reach Kufa, act in such a way that people think that you are crazy, so that you are protected. Otherwise, they are going, they are going to kill you. But then this is also a training from Imam Bakir alayhi salam. That you protect yourself. Sometimes you don't need to say everything. You need to hide, you need to conceal. But then the problem with us, this is one lesson. From the life of Imam Bakir alayhi salam. That we need to hide some things. Not everything is to be said. But then with us is opposite, isn't it? There are some things which need to be concealed. We expose them. And some things need to be exposed. But we conceal them. With us is opposite. Many things need to be concealed. Yeah? Like there are some confidential things we all know. We need to understand. We need to have that common sense to comprehend that there's some things they are confidential. Especially home talks, bedroom talks. There are many things which you will find that people, they overspeak. Confidential things need to remain confidential. They need to be confidential. Akal demands us that these things are confidential. Yeah, Hiding defects of others. So, well, imagine the title of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Sattar al uyub which means the one who hides the defects of others. But that in our case, when we come to know about someone, something bad, something ill, we want to speak. We don't want to hide. But with Allah, Allah hides. Allah says in Hadith Al-Qudsi that if I was to expose your secrets and your defects, then no one would love to greet you. No one would like to greet you. Everybody will avoid you. If I was to expose your defects. Thus you also conceal others' defects. Imam Riza says that a mormon does not become a mormon. A believer does not become a believer. Until and unless he has got these three qualities. One quality from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other quality from Rasul. And the other quality from Imam. The quality from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is... The quality of Allah being Sattar al uyub The one who hides and conceals the defects. Thus you also take the quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and conceal others' defects. The quality from Rasul, the quality from Prophet is that he was loving, compassionate, very benevolent. You also be loving, compassionate, benevolent, kind, merciful. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Quran says in Surah Anbiya, so Allah was rahmatu, Rasulullah was rahmatun lil alameen. You also take a quality from Rasulullah and be rahmatun lil alameen. And the third quality of Imam, and that quality is that Imam was patient. All the Imams, look at our Imams, all the Imams were very patient. Imam Bakir salam was very patient. That one of his enemy was abusing him, accusing him. Imam would not reply. See, silence is the best answer to a fool. Silence. Imam wouldn't reply. And the one who was abusing Imam was tired. He said, oh, Muhammad ibn Ali, I'm telling you. Because Imam wasn't responding him. So he got tired. That person got tired, but Imam did not get tired. Imam was so patient. The other quality is from the Imam, the third quality. That he, the Imam is patient. See, in our case, there are some things which needs to be exposed. So the topic was that acquiring an act from Allah, acquiring uh, an act from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A quality which needs to be acquired from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And that quality of Allah is being sattar al uyub to hide the defects and to conceal the defects. In our case, we do not conceal the defects, but then we expose the defects, don't we? On the contrary, those things which are supposed to be ex exposed, we do not expose it. We don't. We do not expose them. Unfortunately, there are many things we need to speak out. We need to say, but we don't say. Like, because if I utter a statement, you will want an example also to make it more clear. And it makes sense, definitely. You you need to understand what am I saying? Yeah. So what's the thing? Sometimes, see, when we teach madrasa to the highest class, and when it comes to ahkam e mayit, which which is about two to three topics of ahkam e mayit, and I personally think madrasa is extremely important. It's extremely important because I can't claim to say that I'm a maulana. I'll teach everything myself. There might be other things. Perhaps I cannot teach him. Somebody else will teach him. He will learn one thing. It will be beneficial for him. For him, if he comes out from madrasa, it will help him. All these things are are beneficial for us. The Imam Barga, we have all the all of these things we have at our at our custody, at our disposal. Everything is extremely beneficial. It's it's a blessing for us. The Imam Barga, the masjid, the madrasa, the teachers of madrasa, the environment we have. We don't value because we have already it. Ask those who don't have this. This, this blessings and these bounties. Ask them and they'll tell you. We are already bestowed with these blessings, thus we don't value it. In any case, when we teach madrasa and we have got those to we have got those topics at the highest class, you and ask the students and they'll tell you. You come to ahkam e mayit, and when you come to ahkam e mayit, there are some mustahabat, there are some wajibat as far as ahkam e mayit is concerned. When you come to mustahabat, the mustahab thing. The sunnah, the recommended thing is that a person needs to write his wasiya. He needs to write his will. And then when he writes his will, yeah, he has to also write there that what he's supposed to write. He's supposed to write that they are my, to his oldest son, obviously, that I need my, my some namazes are supposed to be prayed. For example, if, if I've not prayed, my fasts are being to be repaid. My uh, my dues are being to be paid, are supposed to be paid. Everything he lists down, what is he supposed to do? The oldest son. It's extremely important. Yeah. The thing is that it is better also to speak to your oldest son, to your eldest son about your property and assets. So it has happened that sometimes everything is is in limbo. The eldest son does not know anything, and moth is such, death is such that. You, you, you never know what time can occur. Any time can happen. It cannot be predicted. So it's better, to, precaution is better than cure. Everything needs to be written. And a part of that, the relation of a father and son is also extremely important. That bond between a father and son needs to be strengthened. It's extreme. Make him very close to you so that he becomes your right hand. In short, I'll just say that those the three cycles which Rasulullah had said from 0 to 7, 7 to 14, and 14 to 21. If that cycle or if that method, if you like, if that is, that is implemented by us parents, then we won't, have, we won't face problem when the child grows. And do you know from those three cycles, from 0 to 7, then you have 7 to 14, and then 14 to 21, the crucial period is 7 to 14. Because from 0 to 7, the child is a prince. Or the daughter is a princess at your home. That's what Rasulullah says. If he says, buy for him, he wants something, buy for him. He's a prince of the house. From 7 to 14, he's your slave. Make sure that he wakes up for salah. Do not say, Kya to nano now, at that, that is a very crucial period from 7 to 14. If that period the child is left alone, I as a father, I am not bothered. You don't know the consequence you will face later on. You will think, what has happened? Why is my child reacting like that? But because 
See, that's, that the, the relation of the father and son is extremely important. That you need to strengthen that bond, that love between father and son. Keep him together with you. He should be with you. Yeah? He should not feel that absence, that my father is not with me. Cherish that time. Time goes very quickly. They are growing very quick. They are, going very, they are growing extremely quickly. And if you look at their photos and their videos, you'll see, oh, this is my son. He was just born and now he's grown so fast. They grow very quickly. So cherish that time. That time will never come back. Upbringing is extremely important. Follow that cycle of Rasulullah. That period is extremely important. 7 to 14. Because he's your slave. If that is done properly, then 14 to 21 is easy. Why? Because he'll be your right hand. He'll be your wazir. He'll be your right hand. Then you don't need to tell him anything. Because you have already molded him. You have already trained him. But the time has gone. At the age of 14, now I start crying. Baba, it's too late. Uh, in Gujarati, they've got that lakri su. Lili hoe kai ke vishele. Ke lakri, you know, it, it's, it, the earlier the better. That's what they say in Gujarati also. The earlier the better. Otherwise, it becomes very difficult. At a later stage. There was a person in the time of our fifth holy imam. Imam Muhammad ibn Ali al-Baqir, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. He says to Imam Baqir that I'm from Syria. I love you. I'm your follower. But my father doesn't love you. He was against you. He passed away. And he used to support Hisham bin Abdul Malik. He was very close to Hisham ibn Abdul Malik. And he wasn't liking you. But now he passed away. And he says many things to Imam Bakir al-Islam. But by God, I'm your follower, O Muhammad ibn Ali. But then I'm in a state where I'm needy. My fa- because of this, my father broke relation with me. I don't have that strong bond with my father. To that, and this was the reason. What was the reason? Because I'm your supporter. And he was supporting Hisham bin Abdul Malik. And, and then he left us. He went to stay in a different house. And I'm the only son. He was, because he was rich, he was wealthy. He was staying in a good house. It's a, a, a very big house. He chose for himself a big house. But then he passed away. But then he has left some money, a good amount of money. But then I don't have any idea. Where has he kept? I've gone several times to his, his, to his house where he was living in a separate house. I tried to look for money. I couldn't get it. So Imam Bakir says, do you need that money? He says, yes, I'm needy. I'm in need of that money. Imam says that I'm giving you a paper. And then take that paper, go to the graveyard of Baki, to the cemetery of Baki, and just say, Ya Darjan. And then you will succeed. Your problem will be solved. He did what he was told. And he succeeded. He comes back to Imam Bakir and he recites this verse. He says, Wallahu a'lamu haythu yaj'alu risalata. Allah knows whom to give the leadership. And then Imam says, what happened? He says that I took this letter. I went to the Qabrastan of Baqi and I said what you told me. A person appeared to me. And he said that, who are you? And I gave him a letter. He says, are you sent by Hujjatullah? By Muhammad ibn Ali? He says, yes. He says, marhaban bikum. Then he read that letter. And then he says, do you want to meet your father? I said, yes. He says, then wait. He, he went to call my father. My father came. But then he's... I could not recognize my father. I posed a question, is this my father? And I was told, yes, this is your father. He was completely dark. The complexion was completely black. And I asked my father, what happened to you? He says, I became black and I became dark due to the smoke of the fire of hell. He says, and the reason that I was put in the fire of hell, because I, I harbored animosity and enmity against Imam Muhammad al-Baqir. 
And even I oppressed you. I didn't give you your rights. There was some money which I was supposed to give you. Now listen, go to that house where I was living. Go to the courtyard. There is an olive tree. Underneath olive tree, there is money. 150,000 cash. 100,000 is for you. And 50,000 cash, give to Muhammad al-Baqir. Go and present it to him. And now, oh Imam, oh Muhammad al-Baqir, oh Abu Jafar, I have come and I have come to present to you 50,000 cash. This is for you. Now, the person who narrated this riwayah is Muhammad ibn Muslim, who is very close to Imam Baqir alayhi salam, and he was a student of Imam Baqir. See, Imam, these are the students of Imam Baqir, and through their barakah, we have got to learn so much. The students of Imam Baqir alayhi salam. He says that Imam told me, Muhammad ibn Muslim says, Imam Muhammad al-Baqir said, that from this 50,000 cash, I bought a land, Imam says, and I... Uh, I paid my loan. So he was Imam. He had a loan also. I paid my loan. And then Imam Bakir says that I had some relatives who were needy. I went to give them money. This is again a lesson for us. That in our wealth, there is haq of sa'il and mehroom. Haq of sa'il wal mehroom. We have got money. That money, there is a right of those who are deprived and those who ask. Imam Muhammad al-Bakir gave that money to the, need, to the, to the needy relatives. Like Durud Beji Muhammad or Ali Muhammad Far. हमारे पांचवें इमाम की हदीस है इमाम फरमाते हैं क्योंकि आज इमाम मोहम्मद बाकिर की विलादत की शब है लिहाजा बेहतर है कि आप अगर तारीख में देखें तो बहुत सी अहदीस आज मैं अहदीस देखता था कि कौन सी ऐसी हदीस हो कि जो हमारे लिए फायदेमंद हो मुफीद हो हम कुछ हासिल करें यहां से निकले कुछ हासिल करके जाए लिहाजा एक हदीस मुझे मिली जो बेहतरीन हदीस है इमाम मोहम्मद बाकिर की हदीस है और आप तारीख में निगाह करें तो इमाम मोहम्मद बाकिर और इमाम जाफर सादिक से बहुत अहदीस मंसूब है मनकूल है बहुत बहुत काल सादिक काल बाकिर क्योंकि उनको जमाना मिला ऐसा जमाना मिला ऐसा मौका मिला कि दो जो है खुलाफा बनी उमैया और बनी अब्बास आपस में लड़ते थे और इमाम ने वक्त का फायदा उठाया मौका का फायदा उठाया लिहाजा उन्होंने बहुत अहदीस नकल की उन अहदीस में से एक हदीस आपकी खिदमत में पेश करना चाहता हूँ फिर आपकी जहमत को तमाम करो इमाम फरमाते हैं कि इन खबा फलासा फिर फलासा यानी क्या यानी अल्लाह सुबहान हुआ तला ने तीन चीजें तीन चीजें के अंदर छुपाया है अब आए हम देखें कि वो तीन चीजें क्या है इमाम फरमाते हैं कि खुदा खुदा वंद करीम ने अल्लाह की रिजायत अपनी इतात में छुपाया है अगर हम अल्लाह की रिजायत चाहते हैं तो अल्लाह की इतात में अब क्योंकि माह रजब भी है और माह रजब को शहर अमीर उलमोमिन भी कहा जाता है यानी माह अमीर उलमोमिन तो अमीर उलमोमिन की अहादीस मुझे बयान की मैं, मैं बयान करते चल, बयान करता चलू कि इमाम अली सलाम फरमाते हैं कि ला यू कल लो अमल मातक हुआ हर कोई अमल को छोटा मत समझो अगर तकुआ के साथ अंजाम किया जाए या तकवा के साथ अंजाम दिया जाए तो क्योंकि अल्लाह की इतात में जो है अल्लाह की रिजायत है दूसरी चीज इमाम मोहम्मद बाकिर फरमाते हैं कि अल्लाह का गजब अल्लाह की नाफरमानी में छुपा हुआ है लिहाजा अगर मैं नाउजुबिल्ला माजल्ला खुदा की नाफरमानी करता हूं तो उसके अंदर खुदा का गजब है अब दोबारा आमिर उलमोमिन की हदीस पेश करो क्योंकि शहर आमिर उलमोमिन है इमाम अली नहजुलबला में कलमतुल किसार में सेंग नंबर 25 में इर्शाद फरमाते हैं कि ए बंदे खुदा ए इंसान अगर खुदा तो मैं नेमत के ऊपर नेमत अता करे नेमत के ऊपर नेमत अता करे और तुम खुदा की ना फरमानी करते हो तो उस अल्लाह से डरो अल्लाह तुम्हें देता जा रहा है और देता जा रहा है हर एक सारी रबी आमिल ना भी तो आमिल ना भी हम ये दुआ करते हैं ना कितने ये सारे अल्लाह के फजल अल्लाह का फजल है ये अल्लाह का करम है अल्लाह की नेमतें हैं देता जा रहा है और तुम उसकी नाफरमानी करते हो लिहाजा अल्लाह से डरो तीसरी चीज अलिया खुदा जो है लोगों के दरमियान छुपे हुए हैं इमाम बाकिर फरमाते हैं खुदा के अलिया लोगों के दरमियान छुपे हुए हैं लिहाजा किसी को जलील मत करो पता नहीं शायद वो खुदा के साथ बहुत नजदीक हो अलिया खुदा जो है लोगों के दरमियान छुपे हुए हैं 
लिहाजा इसीलिए तो कहा जाता है कि इमाम बाकिर एक मरतबा बिस्तर के ऊपर लेटे हुए थे कि एक मरतबा जाबिर बिन अब्दुल्ल अंसारी भी तशरीफ फरमा थे और अचानक जैद बिन अली भी थे जैद बिन अली और इमाम बाकिर भाई थे जैद बिन अली इमाम सज्जाद के फर्जन थे इमाम बाकिर भी इमाम सज्जाद के फर्जन थे जैद बिन अली जैद आप जानते बहुत मशहूर शख्सियत है यमन में और दूसरी जगह में बहुत जैदी है जो सादात जैदी है जैद बिन अली से लिहाजा जैद बिन अली भी मौजूद थे वहां पर तशरीफ फरमा थे इमाम बाकिर के भाई थे अचानक इमाम बाकिर ने अलिया खुदा कौन है अल्लाह चुनता है अचानक इमाम बाकिर ने इमाम सादिक को पुकारा कि आओ फर्जंद आओ मेरे नजदीक आओ मैं तुमसे रमूज या राज इमामत बयान करना चाहता हूं पास आओ मैं राज इमामत बयान करना चाहता हूं तो जैद बिन अली वहां पर तशरीफ फरमा थे जैद बिन अली जो इमाम बाकिर के भाई थे जैद ने कहा यानी उन्होंने इमाम को टोका ताकि एक मैसेज पहुंचाए हम कहते हैं ना कि जैसे कि फारसी में कहते हैं बेदर मिगुयम दीवार में यानी मैं दरवाजे से कहता हूं ताकि दीवार सुने या तो कच्ची में कहते चे धी के सुनाए नो के जिसका मतलब है कि बेटी से कहे लेकिन सुनाता है बहू को तो बस वैसे ही जैद बिन अली इमाम बाकिर से कहते हैं कि आपको पता है अपने भाई से कहते हैं कि आपको पता है जब इमाम हसन रमूज इमामत बयान करना चाहते थे तो उन्होंने इमाम हुसैन को बुलाया अपने फर्जंद को नहीं बुलाया इमाम हसन ने इमाम हुसैन को बुलाया यानी कहने का मतलब यह था कि आप मुझे बुलाइए मैं आपका भाई हूं बस ये सुनना था तो इमाम बाकिर ने फरमाया कि देखो अलिया खुदा अल्लाह की तरफ से अल्लाह ने चुना अगर इमाम हसन ने रमूज इमामत इमाम हुसैन को कहा वो अल्लाह का हुक्म था और अगर मैं रमूज इमामत मेरे फर्जन से कहता हूं यह अल्लाह का हुक्म है मेरी तरफ से नहीं है उसी वक्त जाबिर भी मौजूद थे जाबिर बिन अब्दुल्ला अंसारी इमाम बाकिर ने जाबिर बिन अब्दुल्ला अंसारी से कहा ए जाबिर कहो इनको बयान करो हदीस से लो बयान करो हदीस से लो तो जाबिर बिन अब्दुल्ला अंसारी ने बयान करना शुरू किया जाबिर ने फरमाया कि हदीस से लो क्या है आप गूगल कीजिए अल इस्लाम डॉट ऑर्ग में भी हदीस लो हदीस से लो जाबिर बिन अब्दुल्ला अंसारी रावी है इनके हदीस से किसा के रावी भी जाबिर बिन अब्दुल्ला अंसारी है हदीस से लो के रावी भी जाबिर इबन अब्दुल्ला अंसारी है जाबिर इबन अब्दुल्ला अंसारी फरमाते फिर उन्होंने बयान करना शुरू किया जाबिर इबन अब्दुल्ला अंसारी कहते हैं कि जब इमाम हुसैन की पैदाइश हुई मैं गया बीबी जहरा के पास बैतुल शरफ में गया ताकि मुबारकबाद पेश करूं बीबी जहरा के पास गया तो बीबी जहरा के आगोश में इमाम हुसैन थे मैंने मुबारकबाद पेश की बीबी जहरा के सिरहाने एक लौह था एक लौह यानी कागज हदीस लौह यानी कागज की हदीस हदीस लौह लौह था एक कागज था उस कागज में से नूर की शुआ निकलती थी मुझे बहुत ताजुब हुआ वो कागज चमकता था तो मैं मैंने देखा कि ये बहुत चमकता है मैं करीब गया उस कागज के पास फिर मैंने बीबी जहरा से इल्तमास की गुजारिश की कि आया मैं छू सकता हूं मैं लम्स कर सकता हूं तो बीबी ने इनकार किया बीबी ने कहा नहीं इजाजत नहीं है कि तुम उसको छू हो या लम्स करो फकत देख सकते हो तो मैंने देखना शुरू किया तो उसमें क्या लिखा हुआ था उसमें सब इमा के नाम लिखे हुए थे सब इमा के अलकाब उसके बाद सब इमा के नाम इमा के नाम और इमा के वालिद माजिदा के नाम तो जैसे रसूल अल्लाह का नाम भी था अबुल कासिम मोहम्मद अल मुस्तफा आमिना बिन ते वहब अली इबन अबी तालिब फातिमा बिनते असद हसन इब्न अली फातिमा बिनते मोहम्मद हुसैन इब्न अली फातिमा बिनते मोहम्मद अली इब्न अल हुसैन शहरबानू बिनते यसजड मोहम्मद अल बाकिर फातिमा बिनते हसन फरुआ बिनते इमाम सादिक अली सलाम फरुआ बिनते कासिम बिन मोहम्मद इब्न अबू बकर इमाम मुसी काजिम का नाम था उसके उसके पास उस उसी के पास लिखा हुआ था हमीदा खातून इमाम रिजा नजमा खातून यानी सब इमा की वालिदा का नाम भी उस लौह में लिखा हुआ था लिहाजा इमाम बाकिर ये कहना चाहते थे कि देखो अलिया खुदा अल्लाह की तरफ से है 
اللہ نے چنا ہے اسی لیے رموز امامت میں امام صادق سے کہتا ہوں اپنی طرف سے نہیں ہے خدا نے چنا کہ میں امام صادق کو چھٹے امام کو امام بناؤں محترم سامعین امام باقر باقر العلوم ان کو کہا جاتا تھا آئے ہم سب مل کے اللہ کے پاس دعا کریں امام باقر کے ذریعے سے امام باقر کے وسیلے سے خدا ہمارے علم میں اضافہ کرے امام باقر کے وسیلے سے دعا کریں باقر العلوم کے ذریعے سے کہ یہ ماہ رجب المرجب ہمارے لیے ایک ایک بہت مفید رجب ہو ایک مفید افیکٹیو رجب ہو خدا ہمیں روزہ رکھنے کی توفیق عطا کرے ان کی کتاب کی تلاوت کرنے کی توفیق عطا کرے سنت اور مستحبات انجام دینے کی توفیق عطا کرے خدا کے پاس دعا کرے کہ تمام مرحومین کے اوپر رحمتوں کی بارش عطا کرے ہمارے گناہان صغیر اور کبیرہ کو خدا بخش دے ہمارے والدین کے گناہان صغیر اور کبیرہ کو بخش دے خدایا تجھے باقر العلوم کا واسطہ دیتے ہیں تمام جگہ پہ جہاں پہ امن و امان نہیں ہے ان جگہ پہ امن و امان قائم کر خدایا جو مکروز ہے امام باقر کے ذریعے سے ان کا قرض غیب سے ادا کرنا خدایا جو مریض ہے امام سجاد بیمار کربلا کے وسیلے سے ان کو جلد از جلد لباس عافیت پہنا خدایا جو بے اولاد ہے ان کو تو اولاد صالح عطا کر خدایا رسول کا آخری جانشین جو پرد غیب میں ہے ان کی ظہور میں تو تاجیل فرما ان کی ظہور میں تو آسانی فرما جو حج و زیارت سے متمنی ہے ان کو تو حج و زیارت سے مشرف فرما اور آخر میں سب مرحومین کو یاد کرتے ہوئے ایک الحمد اور تین مرتبہ سور اخلاص پڑھنے کی گزارش الفات ہے اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك على كل شيء كبير أفضل السلام بر محمد وآل محمد